So definitely the reserve list has held strong. Mox Diamond, Underground C. Anytime Underground C is over $550, I think the market is pretty strong. The other big news is that Star City Games has started really ramping up their buy list. And obviously, in any type of competition, you want as many competitors as possible. So Magic cards are definitely going up. Gayer's Cradle. I remember when, uh, what was it, Boogie, right? Boogie was selling his Gayer's Cradles at the very, very low low right he kind of sold at the exact bottom i think that store owner gave him like 200 dollars a piece these cradles i think his were near mint are now 600 popping almost 600 and when you see card kingdom like here's a little strategy i could tell you when you see them in person they're much more willing when you see these game store owners in person especially at a magic fest or las vegas they got a deal uh, meaning that they will pay more than buy list, especially if you have multiple copies or a place that because they're they're when uh, you are a dealer and you go to these conventions, you're going to buy. You're not coming to sell. You're coming to buy, and your buy list has to be incredibly competitive with what everyone else is, right? Because the guy can just go from, you know, instead of driving from stores, you know, fifty miles away. He just goes five minutes away and gets a bigger and better offer. So they are hyper aggressive at these conventions. Um, the other part that you guys have to know is that these dual lands are just such hot commodities. I'm no longer selling any of mine, but I am buying. I am buying. And my friend is coming over this Sunday. Comic Palooza is Saturday. I had no idea, but he wanted to buy out all my dual lands and then just take them to Comic Palooza and try to resell them there. Uh, but he's coming over Sunday. We're going to talk about numbers. I'm probably going to hold unless the number is much higher than the numbers they're seeing right now. This is the same guy. I sold 17 Lion's Eye Diamonds and I think 20 Grim Monliths and so on. I have sold to this particular person hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of magic cards or high-end magic cards that come through the store in years he's probably my number one biggest buyer um, and he has i don't know if he has i would say like a store but he definitely has the clientele who is looking to sit on these i thought rudy with his uh binders like there are people with binders of black lotuses and binders of recalls and underground seas in fact, I've seen his binder of, of dual lands. It's it would shot. He's got a uh, Ultra Pro like 360 count of just underground seas and volcanic islands. So those are the two that he's always trying to that, that he pays a premium. And I'm not talking about all oh, all of them are revised. I'm talking about pages and pages of beta, pages and pages and pages of, of unlimited. I think he only has like one page of alpha. But some. He used to buy these uh, back in the day when Magic cards were much cheaper. He used to buy slabs so they would be authenticated, and then he cracked the slabs. In fact, I think I have a few videos on my O channel about that, and he just cracks the slabs and then puts in the binder. Dual lands, man. I mean, they're dual lands for a reason. Uh, they're EDH gold as EDH becomes a more and more popular. Like I, I really didn't realize this that. That's where they're going because, in my opinion, um, outside, like if you have one of each, why would you need more? Well, it's because you have multiple decks and they're not going to de sleeve the decks. And some of the sleeves they use are worth hundreds of dollars, right? Comic Cat, Comic Kaza or something. Comic Cat, no, Comic Cat. They call it's it's a Japanese thing uh, called Comic Cat, and those sleeves can go for thousands of dollars depending on the character. And the anime series, and he has some of those, and it's just, it would blow your mind. Like it's triple sleeved, right? So he doesn't want to, you know, change out the sleeves. So I am, um, you know, I am uh, definitely int intrigued in what he has. We're, we're having a nice, you know, he's going to go Comic Palooza Saturday. We're going to have a nice sit down dinner or uh, lunch. We're going to do a nice fancy lunch on. Sunday, he's going to come over to my home. He's going to look at the new collectible items. And I have stuffed my gills with dual lands. 
like I always don't tell you like I, I don't understand like why people would tell you to do something like um I'm always doing the thing and then when it's like successful or it fails then I tell you but I've already done it and I've already done it to the point that I don't want to do it no more like I said I don't really want to sell no more dual lands I've been selling them this whole time to hit like not break even but like to at least mit you know, having 400 dual lands, I realize, is a risk, right? Um, it is a risk. And I actually had, at one point in time, eight Mox Jets. Now I'm holding on to f two. But one of them is kind of damaged. And, you know, just the stuff that comes in is crazy. Um, so this entire time, I've just been buy listing and holding and selling. And um, I have another friend, and he came in one day, and he bought out... What was it? Uh, he bought out City of Trade. I, I had apparently had like 18 City of Traders. I'm down to, I think, a place. I kept the playset. My initial like feeling is I got to just keep a playset. I got to do like a trade binder review. I, I don't exactly know how many duels I'm going to be down to. I'm going to keep a set of Unlimited because that mother effort took us forever to complete. I mean, I actually was one underground C from completion, and I had the buy offer, but then the person who sold it to me said that it got lost in the mail. So then I, I waited two months to see if it was coming in the mail before I had to pull the trigger, and then I pulled the trigger on another one that was much more expensive at the time. So it was kind of, uh, you know, that one was a very painful set to a play set to complete. So I have a place of unlimited. I have one of every beta. And I have multiple playsets of the revised. I'm thinking of downsizing from like 400 to 200. Um, and so my friend coming over, uh, he is definitely thinking of, you know, there are binders out there like Rudy's binder where the people just don't give a shit. Uh, Magic, um, a lot of people grew up with it. They were nerds, computer geeks. Uh, we played Doom. I remember playing Doom with my friends. Just get and now, you know, we want these cards and, you know, he's, I would say I'm okay, right? A baby on the way will, you know, kind of change the financials. But uh, he, he's wealthy as shit, man. He owns multiple businesses and multiple cities and and he all he does is buy this stuff. And I always ask him, like, why do you want more? Because, like, I'm kind of curious. I'm, as a collector myself, uh, if, like, his reasoning is the same as my reasoning. It's just, like, stuff that we wanted as kids. It's no meta zoo thing where like we're getting into the hype. No, it's stuff that like we remember as kids. I remember my first pack. It was a Birds of Paradise. I had no idea why that card was good. Because we played a format called Mana Drop. So like you would just drop all your lands anyway. So Birds of Paradise is actually like one of the worst cards when that's the type of format you play. And that was to save time and lunch. But I remember no one understood the dual lands. I remember having like a play set of Scrubland. My friend, John, who's now a doctor at a very prestigious university, right? John Hopkins. He's a doctor at John Hopkins. And he had this deck called Equality Deck back in the day. And it was a black-white deck with like four Scrublands. That's <laughs> just what we played with at the time, guys. And uh, he, he um, actually maybe uh four months ago was asking me like if he could like buy a deck like that and what it would cost them anyway bye guys